Midwest, cold, murky, not great diving, still didn't really care. I mean, obviously, I would have preferred the tropical paradise of diving, but ultimately, I to this day, like, I live in Florida now, but um, I'm happy to get in a pool. I'm happy to get into some scungy pond, whatever. Um, <laughs> I just like being underwater. Off-gassing, a scuba podcast with host Nick Hogle. Comedy, professional entertainment consisting of jokes and sketches intended to make an audience laugh. Anytime I meet someone that can make me laugh, I am instantly drawn in. On this week's episode, I speak with Olivia of Fully Submerged Scuba. She brings me through her journey of how the class clown from the Midwest ended up in the Sunshine State bringing scuba comedy to the masses. From her first breath underwater to becoming a diving professional, this is the story of Fully Submerged Scuba. Enjoy. Olivia, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing good. How about you? Not too bad. It's uh, 7, 7.30 in the morning. I have my my tea, not yet my coffee. I usually start the morning with tea and then uh, about an hour in I'll, I'll start off with coffee. You a coffee drinker? No, I'm actually like very highly sensitive to caffeine. So I can't do like even sometimes sugar makes me like way <laughs> a little way too overly stimulated so i have to be real careful (laughs) oh really okay okay i think i knew someone at one point they were allergic to caffeine i was like man that must be a a tough one to navigate sometimes because it's pretty much in everything (laughs) yeah i guess i've never what i don't know what the diff like it maybe mine is an allergic thing i just get like really 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 like wired (laughs) okay (laughs) and then a hard crash a really hard crash it's like up and down real real dramatically so okay. I, I guess i don't know what happens when you're allergic to it but okay. maybe that's something i need to look into <laughs> my first question i usually start out with is tell me about how you got into scuba tell me about that first experience that first breath the the why the what what led you into that world Yeah. So actually I, um, was born and raised in the Midwest, completely landlocked, nowhere near the ocean. Um, so it was kind of a interesting journey for me to land in scuba diving being like not grown up by water in general, but, uh, somewhere around high school, I started getting really into like fish and aquariums and like fish keeping and things like that. And so I decided in college, I wanted to either do dentistry or some sort of marine biology type of a thing. And those both are biology degrees. So um, my first years of college were going in, you know, the same general courses. And then by, um, you know, my third year in college, I was pretty sure I wanted to, to go more the ocean fish aquatic route. Um, So I took that direction with my studies and then I took scuba as my PE credit for college. Uh, Then got my checkout dives done in a quarry in some dude's backyard. Um, It was the end of, uh, well, it was the end of the school year. So that would have been like May, right? I'm a little bit out of school at this point now. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, May is the end uh, end of school. Um, so freezing cold, uh, Corey in the back of a some some guy's yard. Um, it was pouring rain out. It was a kind of certification dive where we go down, we do what we got to do, and we're getting out of there. Um, yeah. But I did not care. I was having a great time. And then the next five years of my diving were all Midwest, cold, murky, not great diving, still didn't really care. I mean, obviously, I would have preferred the tropical paradise of diving. But ultimately, I to this day, like I live in Florida now, but um, I'm happy to get in a pool. I'm happy to get into some scungy pond, whatever. Um, <laughs> I just like being underwater. <laughs> That's awesome. No, I, I, 
Uh, I completely agree. So I, my first certification, the first time I ever went diving was in Thailand. So I got, you know, it, it, the first discover scuba dive was like, holy cow, this is absolutely amazing. But then I went back to Austin, Texas, and we have a pretty big lake over there, Lake Travis, and same thing. Um, it, it, it's just, you know, nothing really to see, you know, some catfish, occasional turtle, not, nothing really fun, but yeah, I absolutely love it. And I fell in love with that low vis water. I, I, I still miss it to this day because I was telling you earlier, I'm based in Malaysia. So the there's no diving where I am, but there's a lot of beautiful diving hour plane ride you know, we're really close. Instantly, instantly fell in love with that just breathing under the water. So that's that's a pretty awesome journey. Where in the Midwest? Um, so I have lived in a lot of different Midwest states. I was born in Indiana, but then I went to college in Iowa, and then I moved to Minnesota after that. Um, I didn't dive while I was in Indiana, but my diving started in Iowa. And then um, after I graduated, I moved to Minnesota, and then I was in Minnesota for quite a few years before I moved down here to Florida. Okay, okay. And so when did you start the path into the the professional path? I, uh, when I was finishing up, like just about to graduate in college, I was on my, I was doing my dive master at that point. Then I finished, moved to Minnesota, uh, or I graduated, moved to Minnesota, and finished up my dive master with my new shop up in Minnesota. Um, and then for my job that I got, which is, um, I was an aquarist for an aquarium management company. So like, um, you know, private homes, businesses, whatever that have aquariums, we go in and help take care of those for them. We also do like 35, I believe it is at this point of the Bass Pro Cabela's across the country. Um, we take care of their tanks. So um, for that, we do a lot of diving when it's more of the private homes and things, businesses, you know, obviously most people don't have divable tanks in their homes, <laughs> but the Bass Pros <laughs> and Cabela's do. <laughs> um, so for that, my company wanted me to uh, become their dive safety officer. Um, so I then continued on to my instructor certification because it's um, kind of like a job standard in the industry for dive safety officers to have their instructor certification. So I got my instructor at that point, And then I just have like a very like gung ho course director. He's kind of one of those people who's like, knows I'm ready before I know I'm ready kind of a situation. <laughs> so after, yeah, after my instructor, he was like, you're going to do your MSDT. And then after my MSDT is like, you're doing your staff instructor. So it was kind of just like one after the other went right into it because um, he told me to. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Have you have you been to the Bass Pro in the Round Rock, Texas? I haven't, no. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, they have a pretty big, pretty big aquarium over there. So cool. So yeah. do you do you teach or was it just mostly for the the dive safety officer? Uh, so I did teach after I got it. I taught for a couple of years. Um, and then I just found that teaching is not really like my passion. Um, so I've kind of gotten out of teaching since. Um, I really, really enjoyed learning how to be an instructor because I think you understand scuba to such a greater depth um, by going through that training. So I by no means like regret doing it or anything like that. Um, but the actual like whole process of teaching and, uh, I think you just like really, really, really have to like people to a level that I'm not quite at. <laughs> so <laughs> I prefer just being with fish all day. I don't really have to talk to anyone. Um, whereas instructing, you really gotta be a people person like all the time. So <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a great answer. I love it. Well, awesome, awesome. So, how long have you you, you how long have you been based in Florida? Um, just over 1 year. Oh, okay. Okay. Like that that must have been a, a pretty awesome move compared to being from landlocked states, being a fish lover now you're in Florida. Yeah, it was uh lots of years in the making. I 
my company, the company that's working for these, or the aquarium ma management company, um, they moved me down here. So I still do the same job, just in a different state. Uh, it was a, a lot of years in the making. They knew that I was I was ready to to get going. Um, quite a few years, and then COVID and all that happened, so it slowed things down. But yeah, it was it was a slow grind to get down here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what what part of Florida? I'm kind of like central east coast ish okay okay cool close to a lot better diving i'm assuming i mean like in minnesota i still had to drive like an hour to go to a dive site and it's kind of still the same here i gotta drive an hour it's just that now when i drive an hour i get to be in the ocean rather than a dirty <laughs> mud pit so <laughs> still an upgrade uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. Tell me about the the diving at your local diving in Florida. What's what's there to see? Yeah, so um, the closest one I'm to is probably Blue Heron Bridge. I don't know if you've heard about it, but um, it's a pretty um, renowned dive site, I guess. Um, there's it's it's really shallow. It's a super easy shore dive. I think the deepest it gets is like 20 feet. It's it's super shallow, but there's tons of life around blue heron bridge you can see octopus seahorse um all sorts of small things but then every once in a while there'll be like an eagle ray that'll come through or a manatee or um you know other stuff that that comes through and that's probably my closest local diving spot that i have okay that's uh i have actually never been diving in florida oddly enough so i've done a lot of diving in the united states uh, I've never, I've never done, I've never been to the ocean and well, I've been to the ocean, but never been done any diving in the ocean in the United States. Uh, I was usually in just fresh United water. States. Yeah. Yeah. So it's usually fresh water. Every time I was like, Oh, ocean trip. I'm like heading to Mexico or heading to Indonesia, heading somewhere. And then when I'm back home, I'm like, okay, Lake Travis, uh, some of the other freshwater spots in Texas, but it's, it's kind of a little bit of a regret. I need to make it back there and do some, you know, Florida. Uh, in the Gulf of Mexico, there's some really, really good diving there. It's about 90 miles offshore, so it's it's not exactly easy to get to. You have to do like a live aboard. Um, but yeah, it's, but one of these days I'll, I'll have to make it to Florida. It's, it's, it's definitely in the cards, just hasn't happened yet. There's also a lot of diversity in the diving in Florida, which is why I kind of like settled on Florida being the state I wanted to live in too. Um, because, uh, there's like the Gulf side, um, then there's the East coast side down in, and then down in the keys. Um, but then, so you have like all your ocean diving, there's a good mix of like shore and, uh, drift. Um, but then there's up North Florida, there's all the Springs where you can do freshwater diving like year round and caverns and things like that. So it, it's got like wrecks, reefs, drift, freshwater, saltwater. We got it all. <laughs> I hear uh, I hear Florida man is over there too. Yeah, that's the downside. <laughs> that's what you got to get past. And they come in full force. Let me tell you, <laughs> it's quite an adjustment. <laughs> okay, okay. So my my next question is, I wanted to ask about scuba comedy. How did you get into the world of scuba comedy? So I kind of have always had like the goofy whatever personality, um, like for my senior year of high school, they give out like those awards to the senior things it's, like in our newspaper. Um, so like I got voted class clown um, in high school. So that's kind of always just been how I've been. And then uh, for when 2020 was, and it's also winter in Minnesota, it's like not diving outside of in our pool um, at the shop. <laughs> I was really bored. And I think even the pool for a long time, that pool was even closed. So uh, it's like, how do you stay active in diving when it's winter and it's COVID and you can't even get in a pool? Um, so I was like making scuba stuff like I'd put on all my dive gear and go get in the bathtub and like I took like those bathtub crayons and stuff and I like painted a whole ocean scene on the bathtub and like got in the bathtub with all my dive gear on and took like stupid little photos just as something to do and be goofy whatever and then reels came out 
on Instagram. So this was like, I kind of started posting goofy photos and stuff um, before reel, just before reels. Um, but I've always leaned more towards video than pictures. I'm not a, like, I totally think that people who are amazing at photography, like I see it, I admire it. Um, but my attention span is this big and I am more of a video person. So when reels came out, I was like, oh, cool. I can do video now. And it'd be more like, I don't know, just, just more engaging to me and what I enjoy. And then I don't remember if you, or I don't know if you remember Vine. I do. I do a little bit. I wasn't heavy into it, but I do remember it. Is It was the pre TikTok and I was obsessed with Vine. So that very like reels type of format like is was really my my thing like I really liked it so then there was it's just really really early on that um there was those little trend you know just how there is now there's like a trend going on and um I just knew how to put the scuba twist to it uh make it funny and post it and I was like the first one to be doing it in the scuba you know sphere of the internet Um, So it really took off. And I think the first one was a joke about peeing in a wetsuit and everyone (laughs) loved it because that's a classic scuba joke. So it (laughs) flew, it flew off on, on the algorithm and really took off. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm doing this now. And I've been doing it since. (laughs) That's awesome. Uh, How, what, what goes all, I'm absolutely horrible in uh, like making videos like i've i've tried you know like my my phone will prompt me like oh make a reel make some you know make something out of the the videos or pictures and i i i don't know it's like tough for me sometimes because i'll I'll either get too in-depth where i'm like no it has to be this it has to be that so i have a hard time doing it so even when i started the podcast people ask me oh are you going to be using video and i basically tell them i'm just using the video so that we can see each other when we're talking to each other it makes it a little bit better um but i'm, I'm not you know i i can't do the videos yet because there's just too much for me involved um what what all goes like how long does it take you to do an average video oh boy um so i guess it depends <laughs> i guess this is this is kind of a topic that uh, I went into a little bit today on my stories because I had a video that I created that took me a while. And it's like this absolutely flawless transition video where I go from, I have six masks of the same mask, but all in different lens colors. And I do a transition where it just like perfectly like as I move my arm across, then the mask color changes and I go through all of the masks. And I think it's 12 transitions in one video. And it took me a while to make it, to edit it, to make it all seamless. Took me a hot minute. Then I made another video where I just did a little arm swing motion. It took me, you know, a couple of seconds to film each clip. And then, you know, I don't know, maybe five minutes to edit and it just hit it just passed two million and the other one tanked and i was so frustrated (laughs) because i'm like i spent no time and i literally and it didn't even look that good i didn't think it even looked that good and it's over two million views and the video that i crafted for like hours that i thought was beautiful was like one of my lowest performing videos in the last like six months I'm like okay (laughs) cool so sometimes you have to just let it go and just be like you know what who cares just post it you know um don't get so nitpicky with it um but all in all I spend like honestly somewhere between probably 20 plus hours a week making content so a long time okay so on top of your day job. On top of my day job. Yeah. <laughs> so there must be yeah. a, a, a love there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that or some serious mental illness. I'll let you decide. <laughs> to be to be honest, um, I, I can definitely relate a little bit. Not, you know, I, I, I don't have tons of views. So starting this podcast, um, I... It's crazy because I do have my regular job. Like as soon as we finish up here, I'll I'll head into work, and 
it's crazy how much time I'll put into it after work or even sometimes, hopefully my boss doesn't hear during work. <laughs> you know? I'm like, okay, let me just sneak to the side real quick and try to get this you know, email sent out. But it, it really is. And, and I was like trying to figure out like, man, how much time am I actually putting into this? Because um, it's so it's still very small. I have uh, I think I'm about to release my fifth and sixth episodes today or tonight. Um, and so but it's like as soon as I'm done recording, it's like, OK, now I have to edit. And then I'm absolutely, absolutely horrible with promotion. So I'm um, or marketing, whatever you want to call it. So I'm like, OK, how am I going to do this? And, and, it, and it's funny if you look at the history of my my Instagram page or how I promote, I'm like changing it a little bit every time because I'm trying to figure out like, OK, is this going to work? Is that going to work? Ooh, I got a little bit more views on this. Maybe I should try that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's funny how much time you'll end up putting into it, but it's, you know, like, I feel like kind of scuba diving, most people that get into it, we, we, there's a absolute love for it. So it's like, we'll put the extra needed time, probably a little bit too much time into it. So, um, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, no, that's, that's, that's awesome. Um, the, so I'm, I'm sorry that the 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 hard worked video didn't really get a lot of it so do you think you'll try more of those type of videos or are you just gonna go for the quick 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 clips i mean the thing is also about the algorithm is that you just don't ever know so it's like even if that one didn't take off that time it doesn't mean like the next one and people still really loved that video it just wasn't quite as effective i guess as the other one the other thing too that like i try to remind myself well, one is like what I enjoy making. And at the end of the day, I still love watching that video because I'm like, nailed it. I'm like, I nailed that. <laughs> it's so clean. So and, and it, it's, you know, I like it. But then also um, you're catering to different audience. You know, sometimes it's like sometimes there's a video that caters to a very, very wide audience. And sometimes it caters to a much smaller audience, but it's still impactful for them. Um, now, I mean, I'm not making anything that's wildly, wildly inspirational. Like, you know, there are people out there that are <laughs> far more, you know, doing big move things. But uh, my goofy little videos make people smile and, and uh, laugh and they enjoy them. Um, so, you know, if it was the one that was, you know, it's always like no matter what video I make, it's somebody's favorite, I guess is is what I'll say for that. So, you know, you just, you just got to let it go. <laughs> it's no big deal. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So, uh, do you, do you, where do you see the, the future of scuba, scuba comedy going? Um, you know, I don't really know. I just go day by day. <laughs> I really want to, um, I really want to do like a dive all 50 states tour thing eventually, um, which is kind of, I mean, I'm, my personality is my personality. It comes along with me. Um, but as far as like the trendy reels clips thing, um, I don't know that I'm just going to squeeze tight onto that and never let go. Um, but yeah, I've had this like dream of doing like a full tour of all 50 states where I go and I do like the best dive spot in every state um, or, you know, there are some states that probably have a couple that would deserve highlighted, but just because like I was, uh, I started landlocked in a state that you wouldn't think that you could dive in or that diving doesn't ever come to mind. Um, and I've found that like, there's pretty substantial dive communities in every state no matter where you're at um so i think it'd be really cool to do like a tour thing and highlight all the dive communities in the different places you can dive like all across the country um but that's a hefty goal so i don't know and it's not like it hasn't been done there's people who have dove all 50 states um there's a i can't remember what her name is but there's a book on it where she dove all 50 states but i'd want to do more of like a vlog style um video kind of diary of all 50 states but i don't know we'll see yeah, no, that's that's awesome. Uh, is there is there any? I mean, I'm sure that there's some some top states that you would like to visit because uh, I I know for me there's a there's a few destinations like I've always wanted to go dive in the Pacific Northwest, 
somewhere just because I've heard it's the, the diving there is phenomenal. It's really cold, and I'm not much of a cold water guy, but I'll do it. And, and there's some cold water destinations that I need to make it to, but, um, you know, I want, I want that tropical. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not a big fan of the cold. But is there any top destinations in amongst the 50? Yeah, um, so in Missouri, actually, there's Bon Terre, um, which is a mine pit that's been uh, flooded. Um, super unique dive spot right in the center of the United States, in the middle of nowhere, um, which I think is a particularly cool one to highlight. Kelp forests in California or off the West Coast, um, definitely super unique and cool. Hawaii has that that um, manta ray night dive with the light that I've always wanted to do where all the mantas come in and swoop to eat. I don't know, more just like, I feel like there's just things that I, places that I don't know exist, like uh, in, where is it? In, I think that it's Pearl Lake or something, like in Wisconsin or Illinois. I feel like it was right on the border. It actually has a really nice dive spot there. Uh, water can be pretty murky, but it also on good days can be like ridiculously clear for what you would think would be in the Midwest. And uh, I went there for my um, IE to do my instructor exam. Had no idea it existed. They popped us in this lake and I was like, I, wh- like, where did this come from? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why does nobody I mean like everybody around the area knows about it but I was like we're two states over I had no idea this existed like I just think there's so many places that could be highlighted so much better cool cool yeah if you make it uh or when I should say when you make it out to Texas they they have some pretty cool dive sites too there's uh Ocarina Springs which is a uh, uh it's a natural spring, and what's nice about it is the water's super clear, and it's 72 degrees year-round. So a lot of people in the wintertime will actually go there to do their certifications just because it's it's crazy when, when the air temperature is super cold, you can just see steam coming off of, uh, coming off of the, the pond, the lake, I should say, Ocarina Springs. Um, it's not really a lake. It's kind of small, but... I don't know what you'd classify it as, but it's it's a really nice spot. And then they have a, some other dive parks there too, which are really nice. So you know, it's it's all man-made, but they'll sink you know some some wrecks down there, and they'll do treasure hunts. So they'll go and hide stuff for people to find, and um, some really cool places. That, t- to be honest, kind of like what you were saying, um, when I did my first dive in Thailand, I was like, oh, okay, I'm going back to Texas. Uh, I'm going to have to wait a long time before I can go and get certified because I had no idea that there was this thriving diving community in Texas, not even just central Texas, but all over Texas. And uh, it's it's quite it was it was a lot of fun to kind of navigate that and meet the different people and everything. So, no, I really, really hope that you get to do that journey. That would be absolutely amazing. I can't remember. I do know that there is a book. I can't remember her name. It's like right on the tip of my tongue because I think I want to say she might be based in Texas, but I can't. Don't don't hold me to that. So uh, my my other question I wanted to ask is there is a love of the skeleton suit. Tell me a little bit about that. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, oh, so the dive skins that are available um, are I, I don't want this to come across that I'm like bashing these companies because I think they're all great and I fully love what they're doing. But it just was for me, it was like every single brand is doing like whale shark print, tiger shark print, uh, eagle ray print. Like they're all their own variations of the same brand and it's co- or the same prints. And it's like the same idea, copy and pasted in like different fonts over and over and over again. And people love it and it works and like, that's great. But it was like, just not really my, not really my vibe. Um, So I was like digging and digging to find what is it that like I want to wear? That's a dive scene. Like, what can I use? And the closest thing I could find was like Halloween morph suit type things, which is essentially the same, you know, material, same, same stuff. So I was just like scrolling through different different uh, Halloween costumes because they make them for a lot of different 
you know, there'll be like a little Christmas elf and like all sorts of weird things. And then I came across the skeleton and I was like, that's it. That's what I want. Um, <laughs> I was like, that's what I want to wear. That's what I want to have underwater. I look so cool underwater. Uh, especially when like your the lights hit you or so like if someone's taking a photo of you or something and they have those lights on like some of the prints really like glow um so I got my first skeleton suit and that was uh another I think that was 2020 and the pool did open up that that year for Halloween so we got in the pool with our skeleton suits on and just like took a bunch of pictures for fun I think we brought in a, a fog machine and like, uh, I got little like color changing light, like pool lights that you can drop into the water. And we just like swam around and did all sorts of photos in these skeleton suits. And it was a really good time. We had a, we had a lot of fun with it. And then I did it again the next year and I did it again the next year. And then I kind of somewhere along the way was like, I don't want to wait for Halloween to wear this skeleton suit. I just want to wear it all the time. So I just wear it all the time. That's awesome. <laughs> I, uh, no, I, I kind of agree with the, the, I feel the same way about wetsuits. Um, I, a lot of them are just the same black, super just, you know, no, not really exciting or anything like that. And, um, so I was actually real happy when I saw, uh, for, well, I'll bring it back a little bit. Uh, for a long time, there was a, a wetsuit company in Texas, and I said for the longest time, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, reach out to them because they make custom wetsuits. I'm gonna reach out to them. I really want to get that just early '90s, late '80s, just day glow, those bright colors. Like I hate just all black sometimes. Like I, I just, I'm not a big fan of it. And I mean, it does look cool. Don't get, don't get me wrong, but I'm like, I need, I need to, you know, brighten up my life. And uh, I was like, I just want bright, bright colors. And so Bear came out with that wetsuit. And it's actually, the, the it's funny, the picture that I send to all of my uh, potential people to interview, which is really funny. I, I love the picture because I'm just standing there like, hey, you know, it's just a, 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 it's not super bright, but it's just a not black wetsuit. And I'm like, man, I want something just you know, bright yellow, bright red, something. And uh, it's it's not easy to find like the things that you want. So you kind of have to make it. So if anybody out there is listening and they want to sponsor me for a, a big bright wetsuit, please let me know. <laughs> yeah. I want to walk Heck out yeah. to the dive site and just look like I just walked out of like an early 90s, late 80s ad. <laughs> you know, like, just like, hey, I'm here. Let's go diving. Um, but no, that's that's awesome. Um, and then I actually had an, another. Uh, do you use the, the 360 action cam? Do you use that? I was looking at that. I ended up getting another one, but I was just kind of curious about that one. Yeah, I have it. I've um, I've only used it a handful of times, um, but yes, I do have it, and I I really like it. Okay, okay, yeah, because I was I just picked up. Um, it was. Either going to be, I mean, I know the GoPro is kind of the go-to, but I was just curious about that just because um, I picked up the the DJI, which I started watching a bunch of videos. And, I mean, GoPro has been, been on top of their game for a very long time. People either love them or they hate them. Um, but I was just like, oh, I'll try something different. So I went for the DJI, and, and I'm actually pretty happy with it. I haven't, I mean, I, like I said, I don't, I'm not putting content out there. I'm not making professional videos or anything. But for me and what I do, I was like, yeah, this is cool, you know, so. I've heard good things about the DJI, too. Um, the GoPro, their 360 camera, I don't think they have an underwater housing for it. Is your DJI a 360 or just, a, like, action? It's an action, yeah. It's basically, like, it looks exactly like a GoPro. Gotcha. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, that was, I don't know that I would replace my, three. like, the 360 wouldn't replace the GoPro for me. It's kind of like a, in addition to, um, just, I think, I mean, you can switch the 360 so where it's just front, uh, um, so it's taking video like a GoPro would, but there, it, I don't know. It, it's, I have it for the 360 function and I don't know that it's, it replaces the GoPro, like, it, you know, out of 360 mode. I don't know that it does what the GoPro, um, it's not as nice as, as doing, using the GoPro. So, um, especially cause I can't add light to it because of that 
because of the way it attaches to, you know what I mean? Like you can't, with my GoPro, I have like one light, then my GoPro, it's nice and small and compact. 360, you can't add a light because in the 360 mode, you're going to see the lights on it. But also I don't even know how you'd mount a light with it. You'd have to, I don't know. It's more complicated. So when I'm taking the 360, I, I mean, it's specifically for 360 mode and that's it. So yeah, but I do enjoy it. It makes some really, really cool shots. Okay, cool, cool. So a couple last questions for you. Um, any advice for those young entrepreneurs looking to get into scuba comedy and make content what advice would you have for them so as far as making content goes um i think to make sure that you like cater it to something that is natural um and uh like enjoyable to you um so you know if comedy is not your shtick then um do something else uh you know there's uh, know uh, another creator who um, is big into photography and so she makes a lot of videos um, that are like tips for photography type of stuff um, another creator that uh, is also a photographer but instead of doing photography tips um, he like will do um, what's this creature and he has like a video where he shows his pictures in the background and he talks a little bit about what the creatures are um, a little education on on the things that he's actually photographing that rather than how to photograph um, I know another person who does like microbiology type of stuff um, so whatever you're good at whatever you're passionate about passionate about and whatever comes naturally to you uh i said like the perfect storm of making your content and what's most successful is like where all those things meet um so people are going to pick up on you being authentic and things that you're passionate talking passionate about and um are naturally good at and that's going to to do the best for you i'd say and then don't be too um don't be too picky about what you make because sometimes something that you slap together will be the thing that takes off um and also part of why i got as successful as i got was just because i just started posting so i know a lot of people who are like you know like they'll dm me and be like oh i really want it i really want to do this but i'm i'm too nervous i'm i'm too scared i'm you know it's not what i what i want yet or you know i don't know whatever reasoning they have um and my first videos are not great my i have videos now that suck but you just post them just post it it's fine just post it okay okay words to live by right there um and my last question before we sign off is you are looking at your younger self fresh out of open water. What advice would you have for that person? Um, I would say uh, look into your instructors better. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did my dive master twice, actually, oh. uh, because my first time around, I learned the second time around was no bueno. Um, and then after getting into my instructor course, I l was thinking back to my open water course and I was like, wow, I didn't do half these things. Um, or yikes, that was absolutely not in standards. And like just thinking about all these things throughout my uh, courses going up that I was like, oof, this was maybe not the best. Um, but luckily I just by complete and total chance, like everybody I dove with um, throughout my journey, like I immediately off the bat, like all my dive buddies were all professionals. Um, I went from open water, like everybody I had was, was a dive master or, or beyond. Um, so I think just by being around so many professionals was how I lucked out in that the faults in who was my actual instructors for courses um, were made up by having tons of other pros around me. But I think it's super, super important to find a dive pro for your courses that um, is quality <laughs> and knows what they're doing <laughs> and is following standards. <laughs> also, words to live by. Well, I want to thank you very, very much for coming on to the show today. I had a wonderful time. Hopefully you had a great time. And I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks so much for inviting me. Off-gassing. 
a scuba podcast.